Hey everyone out there, how are you doing? Today, we're gonna talk about how to build a business of residual income, and this is part two in a seven video series. I wanna say welcome, my name is Holly Hireman. I've been in business, well, let's see. I have lots of years of experience with business. My parents were small business owners. I worked for um, and helped to create the, the giant business that was Powder Blue Productions. Um, formerly Powder Blue Productions, now is purchased by Beachbody. So if you've ever heard of certifications like um, Turbo Kick, Pio, uh, P90X, Insanity, um, pretty much anything where if somebody can take one of those branded formats and teach it somewhere, then that is the company that I helped to develop and create alongside, um, or actually under, Shaleen Johnson and Brett Johnson. So that's kind of been my experience with business. Not only that, but also in 2008, I started my own business um, part-time, working about 10 hours a week, and um, I've been able to build that into a um, a, a, a very successful home-based business, and now it is my passion to help other people find freedom creating this anomaly called residual income. It sounds too good to be true. If you just think about actors, uh, they get paid when their movies continue to live on, right? So they do all this work to, to develop this movie, and they continue to get paid. Their movies live on. That's kind of what residual income is. You do a lot of work up front, but you're the work that you've done continues to pay off over time. So you can take vacations, you can take breaks, you don't always have to trade a specific amount of time for a specific dollar amount. That's what residual income is all about, and that is what I'm passionate about, is helping people to create that. And do it from the comfort of your own home, as well as, da da da, uh, totally on your own freedom, your own free time. So I love this topic. So today we're talking about part two. The second thing that you need to do in order to create a business that is strong to develop residual income is to have a very strong why. And you're like, what does that mean? Like the letter Y? No, no, no. Your reasons for creating that business. What are your reasons? So, you know, I, I talk about this a lot with people that I bring into my business. I'm like, we need to figure out why are you doing this? Like, what do you want to get out of it? So if you were to think like big picture, pie in the sky, anything and everything that I could possibly want out of starting a part-time business, um, but potentially hopefully making full-time income with part-time hours, what would that look like for you? And why are you doing it? So it's not good enough just to say, well, because I want to be, I want to get out of debt. Okay, well, you need to define that. Because imagine, imagine this for just a moment. You imagine this. Say that we put a dartboard up on the screen or up um, in front of you, a dartboard up in front of you. And we give you a dart and we say, okay, we want you to aim for um, the very center of the target. You know exactly what to aim for, right? You're looking at the center of the target. So maybe with practice, a little bit of extra, you know, time, all that stuff, eventually you'll probably hit the center of the target because you know exactly what you're aiming for. Now, here is a why or reasons, and this is why people um, fail a lot of times with even a diet plan or with um, any type of goal, to be honest with you. The reason that they fail is because they don't have a clearly defined why or reason why they're doing it. So that would be like a saying, you know, say if you say, oh yeah, I want to I want to start a business because I want to become financially independent. And I say, great. If you left it at that, this is, that would be similar to basically me putting a dartboard in front of you, me putting a blindfold on you, spinning you around 47 times, handing you a handful of darts and say, hit the target. You don't even know where you are. You don't even know where the dartboard is. You have no idea if where you're throwing the darts will even hit anything or anyone, <laughs> right? You have nothing to focus on. You have nothing to aim at. Now, here's the cool thing about the human brain. The cool thing about the human brain is that it subconsciously will lead you to the direction that you tell it to go. It subconsciously will start to lead you toward the things that you want. And that's like, if you've ever heard of the movie or the book, The Secret, I mean, that that's a lot of it behind it, is that 
when you bring something to your conscious mind and you're consciously thinking on those things, then eventually your subconscious mind takes over. Now, usually we say that it takes three weeks to develop a habit. If you do something diligently for 21 days in a row, that's kind of what starts the process of creating those, um, creating that undertone, that underlying current of drawing you to those things. It's like this. If you're like, oh, Holly, this is just like a bunch of baloney. That's okay. Imagine that you're in the market, you're looking for a brand new car and you decided on a specific car. All of a sudden, every time you get in your car, you see these cars everywhere on the road. Now, is it possible that everybody decided to buy that car at the exact moment that you decided to look into that car? No. The more reasonable answer is that it has become part of your conscious mind. So the things that you subconsciously, which thank God, we decide to ignore like 99.9% .9 of our surroundings. Subconsciously, we're not thinking about it. But once we've set our sights on something, we've decided on it, then all of a sudden it comes to the forefront of our mind and it's become part of our conscious thinking. And that is why all of a sudden it seems like those cars are everywhere. They're everywhere. How come I never noticed them before? It's because it wasn't part, you didn't put it in your brain, in the, in the front of your brain. So when it comes to developing residual income, it all circles around what, how clear are you going to make that goal? How clear can you define that thing that you're going after? For instance, when I started my business, I knew that I had a couple hundred thousands, uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars of debt. And um, over $50,000 of that was in credit cards alone. So I truly set my sights on, um, I wanted to pay off at least the credit card debt, $50,000 within two years time. So that's what I gave myself. And um, I knew specifically how long, uh, how long I could possibly pull out of my schedule without going crazy, um, which was at that time about 10 hours a week, which by the way, I still work about 10 hours a week doing this awesome business. Honestly, I obsessed about it. I thought about it. I prayed about it. I continuously would write notes to myself, like how I was going to get there. So it wasn't just about what I wanted. It was a specific dollar amount. It was a specific set of time. My brain, my subconscious mind and my conscious mind had something to aim at. And I decided to think on that. So I would put up little reminders, little triggers all around on my computer, right next to my bed. So when I got out of bed every single morning, I looked exactly at what I was aiming for, the business that I was trying to build and why I was doing it. Now, this is where you develop Willpower will fail you. Willpower will fail you. But why power? That is what is going to take you to the next level. What do I mean by why power? Your why power is layering upon layer upon layer upon layer of why you are doing something. Okay? So my reasons for why I was doing it, of course, I wanted to get out of the debt. But why? Because I was stressed all the time. So I wanted to eliminate stress. Okay, well, how would that make me feel? Okay, what's well, gonna make me feel more comfortable? Okay, it's gonna make the creditors stop calling me. That's gonna make me feel better. I'm gonna feel, of course, less stressed. I'm gonna sleep better. I'm gonna be able to eliminate um, some of my jobs because I had three jobs, a part, uh, two part-time jobs and a full-time job. And then when I started my business, um, I did that in the additional 10 hours a week. So I was already working 70 hours a week. Um, so those were like immediate for me, right? Okay, so obviously stress, sleep, um, I would have more time, right? So I just started layering like, okay, but why do I want those things? Well, I want those things because eventually one day, maybe I want to start a family. Great. I want those things because eventually one day I want to be able to own a home again because I had lost my home. I wanted those things because I wanted to eventually get married again. And all of those things that just started stacking up and it all led back to, and people say that money isn't happiness and that's true. It's not, it's not, but it does give you options and it does give you freedom. So if you can find a way where you, where you enjoy what you're doing and you're helping other people so you feel good about what you're doing, do it in a way that you want to create your best life ever, I think that that's like the ultimate dream job personally. So that's what I started doing was I just, and I didn't even know what this, this is technically called why stacking or developing your why or developing your why power, all that stuff. I didn't know. I just knew that I was like desperate for a change and I wanted to make that change. So that's what I did was I started to create all these different layers 
of how that would benefit me internally, of course, externally. Oh, okay, well, how's that gonna benefit my family? We'll be able to see them more. I'll be able to spend more time with my sister and my niece who was very young at the time. Okay, I'll be able to spend more time with my parents who honestly taught me how to be an entrepreneur. That would be great. I So then it, then it goes extended beyond myself. So whenever you're developing a business, this is what you gotta do. You have to, or actually going after any goal, really going after any goal, you gotta sit down and figure out, okay, where where are you going? How are you going to get there? And then most importantly, though, why do you want it? Why do you want it? Because if you don't know why you want something so bad and it's not like super deep in your belly, then you probably won't stick with it, right? So when like push comes to shove or like the waves start coming in or you start getting negativity or you you hit a brick wall, Why would you stick with something unless you had, unless you knew that beyond that wall is something worth fighting for? And so that to me was the biggest, that was the biggest benefit was like, I was very clear. I wanted a family one day working 70 hours a week. There's no way that was going to happen. I wanted to, to own a home one day being hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt and losing my house previously. There was no way that that was going to happen in the state that I was in. I knew that the the path that I wanted for my life, but there was no way that that was going to happen unless I made some serious changes. And this is where most people just kind of sleepwalk through life and they just, whatever is thrown at them, they just handle it. But no, not you. You, you are the people who will work your tail off to get exactly what you want. And there's no reason, there's no reason why anybody can't get exactly what they want. The only thing standing in the way is, number one, your thinking, number two, your habits. And good thing is, you can change both of those things. You can have anything that you want to have, but you need to change your thinking first and then your habits. How is this going to benefit your family, the people who are closest to you, your immediate family, then your extended family, your friends, your close knit network? And then it extends beyond that. Like, how how will that be able to benefit your community? So, you know, initially it did begin with me and the debt that I was in. And then I was like, well, this isn't just for me. Like, this is for my future husband. This is for my my future family this is for my current family and then it extended beyond that and i was like if i can teach other people how to do what i'm doing then i can help other people become less stressed have more free time live live a life that they actually love this is great so it just starts extending beyond that the more money i make the more i can tie the more i can donate the more i can contribute so all of these things it just extended beyond that And you know what it did is it made my why so unshakable that when people didn't believe in me, when people laughed at me, when people said, that's not possible, or you're, oh, ha, 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 that's really sweet that you think that 95% of the world will talk to you like that. You know why? Because it's easier to think that it's not possible for anybody than to actually go after it themselves. That's why. So I'm going to tell you, don't listen to the naysayers. Listen to the people who want to encourage you on and create an unshakable why. Create an unshakable why. That way, when the storms come your way, you can totally, totally just be like, it's okay. It's okay. And you know what? I didn't see, um, you know, that debt didn't go away until like two years into it. So this is a long game. But I knew like my $50 a week, it soon turned into $300 a week. And then that soon turned into a couple thousand. And it's it's created freedom. It's created freedom. And that's what I love about it. And that's what I do what I do. I don't have to work anymore, but I do because I want other people to experience the freedom that that I feel inside. And it's a wonderful, it's a great feeling. So anyways, that is part two. So part one, we talked about setting expectations. And then today in part two, we talked about how you need to create a very strong why, why you're doing something, why you're building a business and kind of layering that. It's like these layers of protection. So if like an earthquake comes by, boom, and it knocks one little layer down, don't worry because you've built up such a strong foundation that it's no big deal. You're unshakable. You are unshakable and you are going to go after that goal.